Ahoy hoy, I'm Planet Walk and earlier this year I responded to a video and I didn't actually know who that video was by at the time. But people informed me that it was actually by someone called Mikey Smith. Now it has been a while since that video so I don't quite remember how bad his arguments were. But I'm pretty sure they were pretty bad if I'm remembering correctly. Anyway, let's see what Mikey Smith has to share with the world. Well, here, let's do it so you get morons can understand. Okay, so sun sets in the west. Um, okay, so how does it extend across the ocean? Eh? If the sun has set, then it's not going to be visible over the ocean. Which is, seems to be what you're depicting with that ball. I'm um, just not sure what you guys are talking about curvature anywhere in your uh, so-called reality. Look, Mikey, if it makes you feel any better, I don't know what you're talking about either. But I suspect that we don't know what each other is talking about for very different reasons. Again, when you see light reflection or the sunset on your supposed ball... The light extends all the way across the ocean for a thousand miles. N no? What I think he's talking about here is when you see this. Except if this is what he's going for, which it really does seem to be, there are several problems with his demonstration. Because the reason why you get that kind of effect over water is the water acts like a mirror, except not a perfect mirror. Now, if you know anything about mirrors, you'll know that what you see from one angle in a mirror won't necessarily be seen from another angle in a mirror. Like using the photo that I showed earlier, if you were to go above it when it was taken, you wouldn't see a line in the water because that line in the water doesn't really exist. It's just a reflection based on where you're viewing it from. Now, if you know anything about where the horizon is located over water, usually it's not too far away. No more than 10 kilometers in most cases. Now, I shouldn't have to tell you that where he's saying the light should go from and to is way more than 10 kilometers. Like, think thousands of kilometers. All because of something that only depends on you being able to see a reflection and nothing else. This line of light that he's showing there doesn't really exist. How does this guy over here see the sun reflect to him on the surface of the ocean? Because the sun is above the horizon, which means that the light can bounce off of the ocean and into that person's eyes. It's actually really simple. Remember, God's son walked on water. Prove me wrong, I dare you. God's son walked on water. Now, the reflection of the sun walked on water, as you can look up on your God Google, and it will show you the sun reflecting across the ocean, as if it's walking on water. Oh, oh, talk to you later. Uh huh. How? I'm... What is he even talking about? Jesus walking on water is not is not the sun, as in the light in the sky walking on water. Light doesn't walk on water. The Bible story is about a guy that's supposed to be God's son walking on water, not an actual sun in the sky. <laughs> that's not what it meant. That's not what anybody has ever thought that it meant. This almost sounds like a parody of Flat Earth, but I know that it's not a parody of Flat Earth because there's absolutely no logic behind it. Anyway, let's look at another video. I think the trick here is to not take these seriously and then we'll be able to survive and live another day. Okay, here's a tip for any aspiring content creator out there. Do not open your video by licking your lips. If your lips are dry, drink some water. You are dehydrated. So drink some water now. Go do it. Have you done it? Good girl. <laughs> Quick video here, guys. I mean, you could make the video even quicker if you didn't lick your lips so much. That has literally been half the video so far. This is the reason why it is very important to stay hydrated, folks. Gravity. Good luck. Let's go from heavy things to very light things. And things that are lighter than air. Hey? 
You know, usually flat earthers will bring up things that are lighter than water. Has Mikey forgotten about water and that's why he hasn't had a drink in ages? We got the shipper tankers sticking to the bottom of the ball. You need to explain how that works. Well, firstly, shipper tankers are in water. So just going to remind you, Mikey, that water is a thing that you should probably drink. Secondly, we can talk about things that you actually did mention, and one of the things that you mentioned is gravity, which is why things stick to, quote-unquote, the bottom of the ball. There is no actual bottom of the ball because there's no up and down in space. It's all relative. If I actually had a ball that I could show you, and feel free to make whatever joke you want out of that, that ball would really have no top and bottom. The top and bottom of that ball really depends on its orientation to you know, the gravitational field. If I turn it a bit, then there's a new top and bottom. So, honestly, tops and bottoms, completely relative, doesn't really exist. This has got to be the most uncomfortable Flat Earth video that I have ever watched. He's just so dehydrated. Does he, like, n need someone to call him a good girl for, like, drinking water? Otherwise, he's not going to do it? Hell, maybe he needs to even be called a good boy. Who knows? You've got... 80,000 pound... tractor trailers driving in Australia. How do they stay stuck to the bottom of your ball? It is gravity because the gravitational force is proportional to the mass of the object. The higher the mass, the more gravitational pull is on the object. So sure, objects with more mass are more resistant to the forces acting upon it, but that's only if the force stays the same. If the force scales with the mass, then you're going to see the exact same result, whether it's a 1 kilogram object or an 80,000 kilogram object. Show me the experiments. Not blah blah blah. Show me an experiment of your own. I mean, earlier, you literally asked for an explanation. I can bring that up if you want. We got the shipper tankers sticking to the bottom of the ball. You need to explain how that works. Part of the explaining how things work is what Mikey likes to refer to as blah, blah, blah. But if you don't have the quote-unquote blah, 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 then how am I supposed to know that you actually understand the experiments that we talk about? Like, I could show you the Cavendish experiment, for example, which shows that mass does indeed attract mass, but if you don't understand what's going on, there's no use showing that to you. Because your response to that would likely be, well, show me something sticking to the bottom side of a ball using only gravity. In which case, it's like, well, how do you expect me to do that? Because in relation to Mikey, I'm probably upside down, or maybe on the side. But according to him, the Earth would be flat, so therefore I wouldn't be upside down relative to him. So the question is, what kind of experiment does Mikey actually want? And is that experiment actually possible? And is it what we would expect to see if the Earth is a globe? Because remember, so many flat Earthers ask for evidence that if that evidence were to actually be presented, it would dispel the notion of whatever it is that they think that we're trying to prove. We've got helium balloons. Hot air balloons. I could throw a rock and it will go up. Why do things go up? Because if an object is at rest and you apply a force to it that is greater than the gravitational force pulling it down, then the net force will be up. So therefore, it will move up. It all has to do with forces. So really, maybe try learning physics. That could be an idea. Why does heat rise? I'm asking you these questions. I know the answers to them. I want to know if you know them. Well, I do hope that you share the answers because the way that you're asking these questions makes it seem as though you might not actually know the answers. Like when it comes to heat rising, or more specifically, what he's talking about there is hot air rising. Like heat is essentially a form of kinetic energy. You add more kinetic energy to air, and what does it do? Well, it expands. When it expands, it has less density. And when it has less density, it means that the more dense air has an easier time pushing it upwards. Thus, hot air rises. Simple. I thought gravity was supposed to pull everything down. 
that's right. Well, gravity isn't always the only force at play. Sometimes there are other forces that will act in opposition to gravity, like buoyancy, for example, or you throwing a rock. That is a force that acts in opposition to gravity. What you need to do is you need to consider the net forces rather than just a singular force acting upon something. Again, rude comments. You can just leave them out. Show me your experiments. Come on, Mikey, I don't think I've been that rude. I've just told you to drink some water. That's friendly advice, you know, stay hydrated. Now, you say you want an experiment, and I could show you the Cavendish experiment, but I think the problem isn't so much the lack of experiments that you've seen, but more the lack of understanding that you have. Unless you actually understand what's going on, then the problem isn't with whether you've seen an experiment or not, it's with your understanding. It'd be like me coming along and saying, well, if the Earth were flat, then why is it in New Zealand I don't feel an attraction towards the centre of the Earth like I should do if the Earth were indeed a flat disc. Now you might ask me what I mean about that, and I'd say, well, gravity pulls everything towards the centre of mass, and so I should be pulled towards the centre of the flat disc. And you'd rightfully be able to point out that I don't actually understand flat Earth if that is something that I'm saying. Likewise, if you are trying to debunk gravity, the first thing that you need is a proper understanding of gravity. I'm showing you my experiments with slinkies. I will attach three slinkies next time, and then four, and then five, and at some point, the slinky has to come down all at once. Oh no, I don't think he understands the physics of a slinky either. Do I have to go watch his slinky video now? Have I been locked into this? You think that there's something pulling something. Other than your wanker, stop pulling that and show me your experiments of gravity. Look, Mikey, if you actually displayed an understanding of gravity and the physics around it, then sure, we can go and talk about the experiments. But until then, there's no point showing you experiments that you are not going to understand. Because the problem isn't that you haven't seen experiments, the problem is that you don't understand the physics. It's a big difference there. Anyway, let's round this out by taking a look at his slinky experiment and explaining the physics behind it. Uh, alrighty guys, the two slinky experiment. Again. Now I've got two slinkies connected. You know, it doesn't actually matter how many slinkies you got. You can, like, buy a thousand slinkies. The only thing that you're really doing is enriching the slinky industry. Is Wait, is Flat Earth created by the slinky industry to sell more slinkies? Who knows? As usual, the slinky will go from the ceiling all the way down and not move. And there goes the slinky and it's not moving. Uh-oh, SpaghettiOs. Dun, 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 all the way back up. And a big high five for Mikey. Do, 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 do. We're going down, 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 down. And we keep falling, but nothing else is falling other than the top of the slinky. So, why is this happening? Well, physics can be a little bit unintuitive at times. The first thing that you need to understand is, how does the bottom of the slinky stay in place when you're holding it there? Because when you're holding the top of the slinky, you're just holding the top of the slinky. It's the rest of the slinky that is supporting the bottom part of the slinky. In fact, you can also view it as this part of the slinky holds up this part of the slinky, which holds up this part of the slinky, which holds up this part of the slinky until you get to the bottom. Now, the instant you let go of the slinky, it's all being held up in the same way. It's just that it no longer has any support right at the top. The rest of it is still being supported because remember, Gravity is always acting on something. It doesn't just start acting on something as soon as you let it go. It's already acting on it. So when you let the top of the slinky go, the only thing that is changing is whether it's supported or not, not whether gravity is acting upon it. As it falls, well, less of the slinky is being supported, but the part at the bottom is still being supported by the stuff above it until you get to the part that's falling. It does seem a little bit counterintuitive, but again, you do have to remember that gravity is always acting upon something. It's not just when you let it go. And I will just keep on doing these experiments. How many slinkies do I need to con connect? I don't know, three, four, five, stand on top of a building. I don't know what you guys want me to do, 
but the slinky is not moving any lower than the ruler meter stick. Uh oh, SpaghettiOs. You know, Mikey, here's a question for you if you happen to be watching this. Why doesn't the bottom of the slinky fall according to you? Because you're trying to use this to say that gravity isn't real. Well, what is the alternative explanation that you have proposed? Surely if you have a better idea than gravity, then you would have a good explanation for why we're seeing what we see. Anyway, Mikey, the ball is in your court. Or I guess the slinky is in your court. Uh, but that's if Mikey happens to be watching this, which he might not. We'll see. Anyway, leave a like and subscribe if you like this video or if it reminded you to stay hydrated and remember to leave a comment because those are legally obligated now. As always, a big shout out to my $20 or more patrons. Huge R's, MC Nutkin, Mori, Nathaniel Muller, Vermont1777, Tony C, Rosina Keller, Wolfie, Kid Vicious, Sarcha Campbell, definitely not NASA, Craig D'Amelio, Richard M. Chapman, Kaylee, and Fist Wizard. If you want to support me financially, you can do so on Patreon. There should be a link there. But anyway, I will see you in the next video. Between you and me, thank you for watching.